one man, one country, save 50,000 Jews from Hitler's grasp. Between 1939 and 1945, the Nazis exterminated 6 million Jews across Europe. But one small country, Bulgaria, managed to defy Hitler and save all 50,000 of its Jews. The Jews of Bulgaria had a special relationship with the country's non-Jewish citizens and King Boris. The Jews had inhabited Bulgaria for almost 2,000 years and were very well integrated into Bulgarian society. During the reign of the Ottoman Empire, Bulgaria was ruled by the Turks who appreciated the Jews. So when anti-Semitism and expulsions started occurring in Europe, many Jews fled to Bulgaria since it was considered a safe haven. In a constitution written by Bulgaria, it was stated that everyone was equal regardless of religion or ethnicity. The Jews could practice their religion and still be accepted by Bulgarian society. Uh, those who know Bulgaria's history would remember that for many, many centuries, Bulgaria itself was uh, under foreign domination. Um, from the 12th through the 14th century, Bulgaria was under Byzantine uh, domination. And then only a century later, it fell under Ottoman uh, uh, domination uh, so that for another 500 years. So I think that the Bulgarians know and knew, particularly the Bulgarians of the time, knew very well what it means to be persecuted for being what you are. Even the Bulgarian church was open to religious freedom because although the Orthodox Church had its religion, sometimes the Jews would go to church on Easter and the church leaders would go to synagogue on religious Jewish holidays. During World War II, King Boris III was the ruler of Bulgaria and had a very strong relationship with the Jews. Many of his clothiers, dentists, and court suppliers were Jews. On Jewish holidays, King Boris would send telegrams to leaders of the Jewish community. Boris was very well liked by the Jews, who found him as a good ruler who always took notice of Jewish holidays. Bulgaria had originally allied with Germany because Hitler had promised King Boris land that had been lost by Boris's father following World War I. When King Boris signed the Tripartite Pact with Germany, he was not fully aware that allying with Hitler meant he would have to bow to all of his commands, including the final solution, executing all of Europe's Jews. During World War II, Bulgaria's main goal was to stay to the war. Referring to Bulgaria's position during the war, King Boris said, When the horses start kicking each other in the stable, the donkey gets hurt. King Boris believed that since Bulgaria was such a small country, it would get crushed. As the war progressed, however, King Boris knew he would have to ally with either the Soviet Union or Germany, or otherwise face invasion from both countries. Bulgaria was ethnically closer to the Soviet Union. However, King Boris had strong reservations about allying with a communist government. In the end, King Boris decided to ally with Germany. Whenever you look up north to the south or, uh, or, or to the west, you will see that there are territories which used to be Bulgarian. And as a result of a very unfortunate conclusion of these wars, these territories were taken away from Bulgaria by force of the treaties which were signed at the time and were at Bulgaria's expense. So um, what King Boris hoped to do uh, through this alliance with Germany was to get these lands back to Bulgaria. At the time, King Boris did not realize that allying with Hitler meant Bulgaria would be forced to send the Jews to their deaths. In 1943, Bulgaria signed a top-secret agreement with Germany called the Final Solution to deport the Jews of Thrace, Macedonia, and Bulgaria. The only people who knew about it in Bulgaria were Peter Gabrowski and Alexander Belov, high-ranking ministers in the Bulgarian cabinet who had made all the arrangements for the deportations of the Jews. Box cars were to be sent to Bulgaria, and the Jews were to be loaded and taken away. However, in March of 1943, just before the deportations were scheduled to occur, Liliana Panitsa, Belov's secretary, found out about the secret deportations and warned the Jews. When the Nazis attempted to deport the Jews, many non-Jewish members of Bulgarian society in the parliament, church, and community tried to stop the deportations. There were the ordinary Bulgarians, not that the others are uh, extraordinary, but I mean, those who were not uh, in any way committed publicly to, to any, any office. 
But these were the neighbors, as I say, the friends. There are these, those beautiful stories of uh, uh, friends wearing the, the yellow star because there was the yellow star uh, in, in Bulgaria. So they would wear it together with their Jewish friends so that uh, they will express solidarity and no one will be able to say who is who. It was King Boris, however, who took the final initiative to save the Jews. Boris was conflicted about what to do because he didn't want to have his Jews under Hitler's control. On March 9, 1943, all types of Jews around Bulgaria were rounded up and taken to train stations. They sat at the train stations all day terrified, but the following day at noon, they were told to go home. Even though many sectors of the Bulgarian society protested the deportation of the Jews, King Boris was the only one who could have stopped it. Although the order came from Grabrowski, it would have not been possible for him to make that decision by himself. A government report said that, the interior minister had received instructions from the highest place to stop the planned deportation of the Jews. The only person who had more power than Gabrowski was King Boris. This was his first defiance of Hitler. Even though Bulgaria had a parliament, the final decision was up to Boris. Boris gave a speech saying, I will not let anything bad happen to the Jews because I want them to be safe. Gabrowski and Belov were furious and still wanted to exterminate the Jews, so they immediately made plans for a second deportation, this time hoping to expel all 50,000 of Bulgaria's Jews. The new plans called for the deportations to start in May 1943. During this time, King Boris was heavily influenced by members of the church. The Holy Synod of the Bulgarian Church had written in a letter about an anti-Semitic law passed by Parliament the proposed law contains measures that cannot be just or useful for the defense of the nation. All men and all peoples must defend their rights and protect themselves from danger, but this just aspiration must not serve as pretext for injustice and violence towards others. These letters greatly influenced King Boris, so he decided to take action. One of the things he did was give a speech to the cabinet where he criticized the ill treatment of the Jews. On May 21st, Jews began receiving deportation orders, and on May 24th, they were put on trains. The train started to move, and the Jews were filled with panic, for they thought that this would be the end. But when the trains reached the very border of Bulgaria, unexpectedly, they halted. The explanation was that Gabrowski had stopped the deportations under the personal initiative of King Boris III. From March 10th, 1943, until his death on August 28th of that year, King Boris held firm to the position that the Jews were not to be deported. During this time, King Boris was fully aware there was a plot to deport the Jews. At the end of March 1943, King Boris had been summoned to meet with Hitler, who was upset at the failed deportation. Although Hitler himself did not address the deportation, von Ribbentrop, the German foreign minister, did. Ribbentrop insisted that King Boris hand over the Jews. King Boris knew that he had to come up with a reason to object to the deportation. So he thought up the excuse that he needed the Jews in labor camps to build roads. At the end of the meeting, it was agreed that the Bulgarian Jews were not to be deported, for King Boris had insisted that the Jews were needed for various laboring tasks, including road maintenance. This act of bravery displayed by King Boris saved all 50,000 Jews of Bulgaria. This courageous act never would have been successful if Boris had not compromised in a time of conflict. If he had not come up with the excuse that he needed the Jews for road building, then Hitler would have taken the Jews to concentration camps and they would have possibly perished and if not, they would have lived in agony. Once King Boris stood up to Hitler the first time, he then developed the courage to stand up to his own ministers and stop the second set of deportations. King Boris's rescue of the Bulgarian Jews has had a huge impact in history because Bulgaria was the only European country that saved all of its Jews from being sent to Hitler's death camps. Even though Hitler managed to kill 6 million Jews across Europe during World War II, Bulgaria was the only country that stood up to Hitler and managed to save all of their Jews. <laughs>